I'm Peter Whiting from Clean Capital. Just a very quick overview of us. Um, we're a technology-focused corporate finance boutique. Um, basically, our main role is raising equity. Um, it's an extremely simple process. We've, we look to find great companies, get them ready, introduce them to investors, um, advise them through, hopefully, to a successful fundraising. Um, our sweet spot is about half a million to one and a half million, and we tend to work with family offices and high net worth individuals. Um, the last 12 months has been absolutely frantic. We've raised um, four, for four different companies, broadly in the clean tech sector, um, just over 2 million euros in total. Uh, we've sold a 10 million turnover um, Irish waste collection business. Um, that was very exciting. And indeed, uh, one of our the investments we arranged um, last year is closing, or is exiting, sorry, quite soon. Um, in that instance, the investor will basically double his initial stake, and the entrepreneur who's in his late 40s will retire. So sometimes it happens. Um, now, I, that's a little bit about me. I was just interested to get a very quick impression of who's in the audience. So there's a list of questions here. But could I just ask who in the audience has, has raised money? Um, who's raised it from friends and family? And who's raised it from, where are we, angel investors and actually from uh, traditional VCs? Right, great. Um, who's trying to raise today? Who's presenting today? Same people, yeah. Um, is, there any, is there anybody with money? Any traditional VC funds? There are some. And angels who, who want to put their heads above the parapet? Yes. Um, are there any advisors? There's some corporate financiers. Um, there's some other corporate financiers and there's some lawyers. And we know, yes, and some IP attorneys. So just a very brief, um, well, what I'll say now is that I pitched this at a certain level. Um, some of it will be interesting to some of you, some of it won't, but let's just see where it resonates. Um, one very obvious lesson is that it's got to be the CEO presenting. That, that's our definition of investment readiness. So the CEO is ready to present a winning ca investment case concisely. It's got to be the CEO. Um, you're the person who the investor is entrusting their money to. We see quite a lot of finance directors in presenting. Um, let's move it on. Uh, winning, the implication there is there's an awful lot of competition for the money you're chasing. Um, investment case, the implication there is um, you're almost trying to help the investor do their job. You're telling them why they should invest in you and the business. You're not presenting a product or even a business plan. But that's how we see it. Um, and concisely, um, nothing is more impressive than a, than a quick, punchy presentation. Um, some caveats. Everything that's in this presentation refers to growth stage venture. Later stage is a slightly different story. Um, I just thought I would ask a simple question. Um, if you're presenting to an investor, what, do, what does the audience consider their objective is? Given that this is a workshop. What's the single so what's the single minded objective if you've got a meeting with an investor that you're presenting? Yeah, yeah, go on, anybody. No, I don't think so. No, I don't think so. Go on. In our view it's really simple, but it just gives you a sense of how simple simple people we are. Um, it's simply to get another meeting. And that completely colours what you what you say to them. You don't try to tell them everything and you you almost conceal certain things to try to try to try to develop the interest. But it is absolutely to get into the office and through the door again. Um, just another quick question. There's some very very obvious um, investment case criteria, but which one's the most interesting to the investor? Just someone shout out. Go on, anybody? Anybody else? Uh, I think it's quite simply the return to the investor. The team is probably sort of strategically the key, but at the end of the day, I just wanted to make the point, they want to see some return. Um, and that once you think about it like that, then you're starting to think investment case and you're starting to, you know, understand your audience, really. Um, in terms of the opportunity, this will all be very, very familiar, so I thought I'd just pick on the problems that we see. Um, in terms of people's target market, they tend to, they tend to quantify an industry rather than an actual addressable market, if that makes sense. Um, they don't tend to be very aware of when the market's likely to take off, and that's key to an investor. Um, in terms of the sort of problem or the pain the customer has, it often isn't immediate or big enough. 
um, in terms of the solution, or if you like, the product or service. Um, it's often a very nice to have vitamin pill, it's one way of defining it, rather than an absolutely have to have painkiller. Um, and probably the biggest issue we see is people think that they're operating in isolation. There, there's an awful lot of technology and ideas out there around the world, and we discover this when we present clients to VCs, and they say to us, haven't you heard about other companies doing this? And they're at a later stage. So it's, um, it's quite sobering. Um, I just thought I'd say a few words about gross margin, because to me this is, this is if, the, if a number can be exciting, this is the one. Um, it's the real definition of your value added. So above the cost of goods, this is the extra money that a customer is prepared to pay you for what you do. Um, it's quite deeply fundamental. If you really know your gross margin, or if you can forecast it, um, you understand what price you can sell at, you understand your cost of goods. There's no excuse for not understanding cost of goods. Um, it dictates how quickly you can grow without recourse to further funding. That's absolutely vital. Um, and it also covers up a multitude of sins if it's a high gross margin. You can make all sorts of mistakes. And that's, that's very beneficial in a, in a sort of very changeable, rapidly growing business. Uh, I just thought I might ask what gross margins people are forecasting today. Is anyone willing to shout out? <laughs> Is anybody above uh, 40? <laughs> yeah, some of the forecasts. Uh, above 50? Above 60? Yeah, just gross margin percentage. Pardon? <laughs> Keep going, yeah, right, okay. Um, so, okay, so Annie, <laughs> 70, 80, right, okay, well the, the, the deal that we did last year, which is exiting now, he, he's um, a protection technology, I can tell you more privately, his gross margin is 95%, it's just amazing um, and true. Uh, business model, now I probably, probably need to speed up just a bit, I'm quite conscious, there's a definition, this is very much a language issue, people use this word all the time, I'm not sure the, the definitions are, are shared. Um, what they often mean is the operational model, and the messages there are very simple. Decide what's absolutely core to your business and outsource everything else. Um, and the one message I wanted to leave you with, which is not strictly an investment readiness point, but in my experience of setting up a small business, clean capital, um, what one really needs to do is, is be flexible and imaginative um, and pivot this is what everybody says, but this means sort of changing direction. It's not going to be plan A, B, or C that works. D, E, or F may be, and probably G, H, or I. Um, so pivot and pivot early. In terms of the, C, uh, the team, um, well, no presentation will be complete without a comment on this. Um, I've probably commented on why the CEO is so important. Um, but what we see people doing when they're presenting teams is talking about the people, their qualifications, some of their experiences, often big companies that they've worked for, what we really think they should do is talk about these three things, the can, the will, and the fit. So they need to define what competences are really required to run the business and show how the team members have got them um, with real evidence um, and show gaps, be honest and open. We need to recruit somebody who can really do this because we haven't got them yet. Um, the will, this is vital. Why are these people really incentivized to make this work? Um, and then the fit, so culture fits with a small um, growth venture funded growth um, environments. It's very different to larger companies or indeed companies that aren't venture funded. Uh, just in terms of the numbers, some very obvious stuff. Um, forecasts, please, clearly presented, um, integrated <coughs> numbers. Cash, cash is absolutely vital. Most people have got a P&L, but a lot of people haven't got the rest of, in their case. How big should you try to be? Um, that's extremely hard to judge. I would just say ambitious but achievable. Um, ultimately, you are judged by achieving what you say you can, but if you're not ambitious enough, you're not going to get the second meeting. Um, how big, then the point there is just uh, imagine how big this business can be regardless of who owns it and with no funding constraints. Um, often you're limited by your own experience, your own team and the money that you've got at the moment, but so you've got to kind of think bigger. In terms of funding needs, the short term is vital, obviously, but the less obvious piece is the longer term. So how much money do you really need to build the business over time? Often a VC, um, an experienced investor, wants to put more money in as they go. So they actually want you to need more money. In terms of the return to the investor, so this is arguably the most important bit. Could even be the first slide of a very confident presentation. Um, 
how does a VC look at a business or how does an experienced investor look at it? Um, arguably, they will say, what do I think this business is going to be worth on exit four or five years' time? They'll then ask you, they'll form a very quick view of that. They'll then ask you what your valuation is. They'll then divide one by the other. So another way of looking at that is to ask those of you who are presenting, if I were to give you, or an investor were to give you a million pounds today, what do you think you'd give them back in four to five years? Is anybody going to have a shot at that? So arguably, I think, but an investor might say otherwise. Um, most investors at this growth stage are looking, for, are looking for the potential for 10 times their money. They'll probably get four, five, six times. But if they look for the potential for four, five, six times, they'll probably get double over that length of time, and that's not enough. Um, and then in terms of crystallizing the value, this is the final point. We've heard a lot about exit, but a prominent VC, prominent clean tech VC, said to me very recently, Today, in his growth fund, he will only invest in businesses who've already found a corporation who has a desperate burning need to buy them today. So the technology has already found its future home, and that home, that corporation, is, desperately needs it today. So that's a sobering thought. You know who I'm talking about. Any questions? 